Howdy, howdy. It's lunch hour and we welcome you to Finance Friday. We are coming at you live at Insight Production Studios in Phoenix, Arizona. And for the next 30 minutes or so on the lunch hour, we're going to be talking about your money, building your wealth, and quite possibly those uh, hot Chipotle stock tips that Frank just withholds and just doesn't want to tell anybody. Well, if, <laughs> if you're already saying the name, it's not, I'm not withholding anything, really. Oh boy. It's out there. It's, it's out there for everyone to see. Well, my name is Robert Morales from RCO Network. Good people, better business, discovering the best of you. My esteemed co-host is uh, Frank Ayala from the College Group. Say hi, Frank. Hello, people. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. Uh, <laughs> appreciate, I appreciate being here. As every, every week on Fridays at the noon hour. That's so right. We're going to be taking questions live. If you want to type those in on the comments section, we'll get to those. If you're watching us on the replay, we'll get back to those. We've gotten back to some comments that uh, people left before. But please give us those heart emojis. Thumbs ups are good too, but we love the loves. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and you'll get more shows just like this. So, hello, Senor Francisco Ayala. Hola, hola. How are you doing? I like your Spanish. Your Spanish is you said uh, You said Insight Productions, right? Correct. All right. Yeah, we have a lot of good insights here. A lot of good insights into what's going on. That's right. That, uh, we like to divulge the things we know, the things you absorb, and the things <laughs> we share. Uh, so crazy week this week, right? <laughs> it was uh, crazy week. Uh, why, why so, sir? Why, why, why is that? Well, I think you, uh, as, far, as far as the market goes, the stock market at least, because, you know, that's, that's the big topic uh, around here. That's the, what everyone wants to, to talk about. Um, you start seeing a lot more movement, I think, in the stock markets. Um, you had a period there where the movement was just up and up and up, uh, kind of gradual, kind of building our, uh, building our, uh, our way back from the, uh, from the pandemic early last year. And now you start seeing some more movements up and down, big movements, you know, and uh, we saw that, you know, we're seeing that today, actually, but in the last couple of days, too. So, I think, you know, the market is trying to figure things out. I think, wh what does this mean? You know, um, we're recovering. Does that mean higher inflation? Does that mean uh, we're, you know, what is the Fed going to do? What is, the, what is the government going to do with all the stimulus? And so we're, we're starting to, it's trying to price all that stuff in. So, uh, yeah, and, and from what I'm seeing, I, I was just had a busy week. And I, uh, to be honest, to be fair, everybody, I really have a whole lot of chance to go into uh, deep into the articles and get some information. I got some information we're going to share with you guys. But, um, you know, one thing that I was tracking um, about two weeks ago, um, let's see, actually on the 22nd. So, yeah, a couple of weeks ago is, uh -huh. is this meter. So CNN puts out a post of fear, greed index, which is kind of cool. It kind of tells you about each segment of the market. So if you guys are out there and you want kind of like a, a very topical kind of assessment of what the market is, this is kind of a cool place to go. So I, I got this meter about two, three weeks ago, February 22nd. Uh, to be okay, exact. Uh -huh. So that's that's what, two weeks ago? And we were, we were at the at the greed meter here. So uh, markets were just flying off the hook. I think, you know, two weeks ago, we were talking about how stocks were just going and and, and things are surging, er, uh, surging. Everybody was buying and hold. Uh, everything's going crazy. And now this week, um, if you go back to that fear and greed meter, <laughs> it's changed a little bit. It's not too bad. Oh, yeah? So that was uh, two weeks ago. And then, the, let's see, this one, this one is today. So um, if you look at the if you look at the fear meter, it's it's dropped down a little bit. But the one thing that caught my attention is right there, the extreme fear. I'm like, oh boy, what what is what is that about? So uh, if you go down here, <laughs> market volatility. Uh, the neutral reading that indicates the market risk appears low, but uh, there is extreme fear in uh, the VIX, VIX. The VIX, yeah. Basically, what the VIX is measuring is what, what I just said at the beginning is volatility, right? Those big ups and down movements. Now, for most people, though, uh, they, the, the VIX is, is tied to options, uh, option trading, uh, how many puts and calls and stuff like that on, on the S&P. And people don't really buy the options, uh, as much options uh, for calls as they do for puts, because what they're trying to do is to protect for the put, put options. And so usually uh, when the VIX is up is because people are buying a lot of protection because they are fearful. And so that's what the VIX is telling us there. And, and that's exactly what I said is that now you start seeing some big, big movements, you know, both up and down. And so it's driving a lot of emotion. It's driving a lot of fear uh, you, mostly. And so that's, that's where we're at. 
Yeah. And a lot of that fear, you know, in, if you, again, I, I don't really research a whole lot of economics, but I have, you know, a working knowledge of stuff, you know, when, when there's a, there tends to be a, a market volatility like that. People tend to go to do more of the commodities, like uh, just, just straight commodities like gold and oil, silver, because those tend to kind of last the volatility, I guess. Uh, is that, is that a fair statement? Francisco, or could you yeah, for, for the short term. Yeah, uh, I think so. I think when people are fearful, they start going into the safe haven assets. And yeah, those, those are going to be uh, gold um, as a diversifier, but also uh, the dollar and, you know, U.S. treasuries and stuff like that. A lot of safe haven assets. So those are the ones that, that get bid up during the fear. Uh, but just as quickly as the fear subsides, then that money starts rushing out. And so um, it's usually just a very kind of short term kind of thing, you know, lasting from a couple of days to a couple of weeks that we see those kind of safe assets, what we would call them or, you know, those, those alternatives, uh, the money flowing in there, but then it just comes back right out. Yeah. And, and the, the concerning thing, I guess, the questionable thing regarding that, because historically that has been a safe haven. You know, uh, my brother watches the show too. So he's always telling everybody and he tells my mom all the time, just, just don't pay me in cash. Just, just, you know, buy some gold, melt it down and give me, give me my brick bar. I'm like, I, you know, <laughs> as absurd as that is, it's probably more stable than our dollar. Um, but, but even there's some volatility in, in the gold market too, because I'm, I'm looking at the gold stock. I'll put that up real quick. So um, even this, I mean, even over, this is a one month span, you see a decline or kind of a you know, bearish market towards gold. And historically, again, that's always been kind of the safe haven people go to. Is there, yeah. is there any kind of reason or reasoning behind what, what that's Well, on? I mean, it's just people do not like losses. You know, people don't like losses. We're wired that way. That's, that's how we're, to, that's, you know, how, how uh, we process things emotionally. And the stock market is going to have losses. Okay. Um, yeah. We all know that, you know, but we still don't like it. Right. And so they need to have these diversifiers in there. Uh, to make them feel better. And so that's why they kind of go into these golds and, and treasuries. And, and even, that's why you even have bonds because bonds aren't really paying anything right now in interest. And so, but people are still there because of the fact that they don't like these huge losses. Uh, although they know, uh, you know, or they, at least we can anticipate from history that the stock market is, is going to outperform all of these assets in the long run. Um, so why not just write it through, right? Why not just, you know, get, get into the stock market as much as you can and be able to write it through. People don't do that because they just don't like taking losses because of the way we're wired. And so that's why, you know, um, I don't mind having clients having some allocation to these assets. Uh, and, and bonds, years ago when they were paying a lot more interest, then it made a lot more sense. Now that they don't, um, then, you know, kind of, kind of comes like, why do you really need bonds, right? But it's for, for the safety that at least they, they you know, gives them temporarily. Uh, I just wouldn't have a, a lot of my uh, portfolio in these assets when, if you believe in capitalism, if you believe in the U.S., like, you know, read what, what uh, Warren Buffett says all the time, don't bet I think he said it recently, actually, he says, don't ever bet against the U.S. Um, and I mean, I'm kind of the same mentality is like, why would you ever want to bet against the, the United States for all its flaws, right? Because capitalism is, you know, whatever corrupted and it benefits the rich and whatever it is. But it's the, right now, it's the best thing out there. Um, one can argue, right? I mean, but um, yeah, so. I don't know. China makes our uh, iPhones. <laughs> yeah, but who made, who, but who created the iPhone? Yeah, so they make them, you know. Awesome. But th those wages are, are are super low, you know. Those, that's <laughs> the, the race to the bottom, right? Of trying to get the cheapest labor possible. So, yeah, and that's the way it goes. So, uh, you know, I I try to keep uh, you know uh, an eye on the market because it does affect everything I do as far as real estate goes. My, my normal job isn't to be here live with you. My normal job is to sell houses and, and buy houses, whatever that is, the real estate. Right. And, and so I have to kind of keep a grasp on kind of the way markets are, because whatever happens in the stock market, whatever happens in the economy, obviously affects, you know, what I'm doing and my advice or advisement regarding the purchasing and selling of, of real estate or houses, you know? And so for, for the majority of people out there, 
they're not going to spend the time to do look at reports and they're not going to spend the time to uh, research a company and what's, what's best for that. I mean, there, there might be people out there, but I'm, I'm just talking in general sense. Right. Uh, and, be, and before we started the show and before I started real estate, I, I wasn't really into that stuff. Right. You know, and, and I always, I, you know, I guess I'm a, I'm a game stopper, you know, a retail trader. As soon as I heard something, I just go buy something like, Oh, oh they're buying that. I better, I better run yeah. out. All right. You know, and, and at least now I'm a little bit more informed. Um, but as far as like the general public, you know, with the volatility that we're seeing, uh, not only in stocks, uh, and now and now in bonds, you know, people getting out and we can, I guess we can talk about bonds too, but people are just exiting in masses with, with significant, you know, uh, concern and fear. It's always driven by fear. Right. Fear is probably the, the worst agitator to every market than anything else. It's not logic. You know, um, and so when see as as quickly as people move in, they they pull out. So I guess my question, and, and you can fill in, sure. um, is really what do what does the average person do? Do they do they go on Robinhood? Do they go on Vanguard or whatever free platform? Do they go and try and get their feet wet with stocks? Do they just call you and say, Hey Frank, give me here's here's ten thousand dollars. Can you? Make it no, to, to be honest with you, I mean, you just talked about your day and how your day is not, you know, um, you, you don't spend it looking at stocks or anything like that. Me, as a financial advisor and financial planner, I don't even do that. I don't even spend my day, you know, looking at stocks and stuff, because to me, it's a fool's errand to be trying to do to trying to outguess the market. Like, as we talked about before, the market is pretty damn efficient. Right. I mean, you can try to outguess it and you can, I mean, but what makes you so special? What makes you have the knowledge that nobody else has? Now, I, I don't have that knowledge. Right. So most of my time is spent doing the other aspects of personal finance. Investing is one of them, but you can be, do a good job investing. Just buying some good, you know, good ETFs and, and letting the market ride. Right. And so what I do is I, I, I look at the other aspects of personal finance, like, you know, are you spending too much? You know, because I don't care how much you make in the in the market. Uh, you know, if, if you're spending more than what you earn, then that doesn't you know, you're, you're not getting anywhere. Or, you know, do you have the right insurance in place or do you have, you know, everything that a good financial plan is going is to help you achieve. Right. Because that's really the goal of all this. Right. Is kind of yeah. trying to make sure that you're you're able to fund your goals and betting on one one good stock or or or, or not is not gonna you know that's not gonna drive the needle really yeah and so I, and I, and I, uh, the, oh, i'm sorry yeah so ju just just finish up so i think the the average investor i mean they hear about this because you know it, money is very pervasive and, and you know there's a lot of emotion attached to it because of of uh, what what a kind of um the role it plays in society but to be honest with you, they, they don't. I mean, they, they just look at it and they, they sometimes they say, oh, I wish I would have done that or I wish I wouldn't. But yeah, for the most part, it's kind of they just go about their day and focus on, on what they should be focusing, really. Yeah. So so how many stocks of Chipotle do you have? <laughs> I got, I'm going to pull it out of you one day. I'm going to pull it yeah, out. Yeah. Right. Right. But, you know, and for the vast majority of people out there, kind of going off what you said, uh, you know, the, you, before I got into this line of work and before I started doing a little bit more research for, for myself and kind of the way I want to direct my money and how it's managed, I do want it, I do want it to grow for sure, but right. I, I'm pretty ignorant to how that happens, you know, and I, I think a majority of people out there are caught up in the rat race, you know, ba barely, you know, surviving and, and probably overextended themselves buying TVs. And I was, I did that too. I mean, I, right. there was one point I had like six TVs. It's so stupid to spend all that money <laughs> doing that. But for what, you know, <laughs> so you can watch TV from the kitchen and then walk two feet so you can watch from the living room. But, you know, people do that. And, a bunch of, and then you're watching a bunch of crap too, right? Yeah, because I don't watch sports. <laughs> Uh, the 60 day fiance really had my attention for, a while. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Frank, for calling me out on that one, but, uh, Hey Mario, how's it going? Um, so we got a call out. Oh, okay. I gotta do that once in a while, but I mean, for the vast majority of people out there, they, they, I guess they, what, sh what can they do if, if they're barely making it, you know, barely paying the bills. I mean, looking at crude oil, I mean, looking at the gas prices right now, you know, people that are barely making it before the gas prices went up are, are probably not making it now. 
Uh, we got the increase in food rates. I mean, as gas prices go up, guess what? Your grocery bill is going to go up too. You know, is there, is there little things and little ways that people can save and start investing and start growing their money or at least tips, tips that you can? Well, I mean, the, the first thing I think I would say is going to be have a plan, right? The first thing is, is, is having a plan. It's not just trying to, you know, I'll guess or, 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 or um, changing strategies from one day to the next or one month to the next or if inflation goes up or if Christ prices goes up, you have to have some sort of plan. And I mean, it's, it's kind of what, you, what grandma says, what, you know, you hear all the time, right? Is living below your means basically is, is, is one way and saving enough, you know, sa saving up. I mean, if you really want to create wealth, the best, there's very few people that get wealthy uh, by betting on stocks. I mean, you could, you're talking about, you know, less than, I don't know, 1%, less than half a percent of people that become very wealthy by bet betting on stocks. For the vast majority of people that are wealthy, and believe me, they're out there, you know, those, those millionaires next, next door, um, they just save, you know, they just save and invest. But they don't invest like I'm choosing the right stock. They just save and they buy, you know, the mutual funds from their 401ks, their ETFs, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's just consistent, consistent, consistent. It might take five years, might 10, 15 years, depends on salaries and, and how much you're willing to give up in the short term. These people that uh, that follow the fire, the fire uh, mentality of financial independence, retire early, they save fifty percent of their paychecks or more, seventy percent of their paychecks. They're willing to sacrifice so much for a certain number of years, five years, seven years, but then at thirty, they're mil they're millionaires. You know, they're one and a half million, and they just live off the income. If you're willing to do that, go ahead. But it's not because they picked that one stock. You know, it was because they save, they save 70% of their paychecks and they just invested in broad stock market exposure. And that was it. So you're saying if I bought a hundred shares of Samsung and, and go buy the 70 inch Samsung TV, I'm not supporting <laughs> my stock purchase. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You just know, don't do that stuff. <laughs> the other thing is like, if you're really, if, I mean, and I'm not saying do this, right. I'm, I'm, I'm not giving financial advice or anything like that. Yeah, we do not give financial advice here. This is merely an entertainment show. Please uh, right. recognize that all of the financial <laughs> advice we give uh, should be done with your financial planner, which Francisco Ayel is, if you want to pay him, uh, his services are uh, exclusive to you if you contract with him. So anyway, sorry, Frank, go ahead. Yeah, no, but I was <laughs> going to say, I mean, if, if, if you really think you're a rock star, and you can pick that one stock, you wouldn't be buying the stock. You would be buying the option on the stock because you know that gives you so much leverage. And that's how a lot of these people on the GameStops and, and, and stuff like that, that's how they made their money is they didn't own the stock, they owned the options. And uh, it's just a leveraged bet that you know can, can give you 10 times, 100 times the return of buying one individual stock. And so, uh, I mean, if you, if, if you think that you're the, the rock star that can pull it off, then by all means, I mean, that's, that's the way I would do it if I knew, you know, something was, uh, you know, something was, uh, was going to happen. But since yeah. I don't, I don't mess with it. Yeah. And the, the challenge is that you hear different things from different people. Like if you, if you follow Robert Kiyosaki, he talks about leveraging debt all the time, using debt to build your wealth. And then you look, you listen to Dave Ramsey's like, Oh no, no, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta pay down all your debt before yeah. you can get into a financial situation. And then as I'm reading uh, Mario's comments, you know, credit score does apply to that because credit score opens you up to smaller interest rates to a lot of things. You know, I have a good credit score. So my, uh, my Citibank card, I think uh, on my credit card, which I have zero debt on, right? Okay. So I don't have any right, debt right. on, uh -huh. is about 12%. And it's because my credit score is just a little above 800, but I've seen people with credit card, you know, uh, interest rates of like 25% and, and who would buy anything with 25% tacked onto it. It's just, it's nuts, but people do that. Yeah. Well, yeah, again, talking about, you know, what people really do in, on every day is not, it's not this, it's not being on stocks. It's kind of trying to get their personal finances in order. Um, yeah. I mean, something like that, 25% interest or whatever it is on credit cards that robs your wealth, right? It doesn't matter how much you're making on the stock market. That thing is, t is just tearing down your wealth, you know, exponentially. And so those are the things that people really should focus on before they get into the whole stock trading and stuff like that. Stock trading is fun. 
uh it and uh it's you know it's it, it could be a, a good hobby i guess as long as you don't let it overrun your other aspects of your personal finance as long as you have a good savings savings account to for emergencies and you're contributing to your employer 401ks and you got all your all, all the other things you know your student loans you're paying off whatever it is as long as you have all that then you can do that but for, for the for the majority of people you know that's what you should focus on is, is on the other stuff of personal finance yeah, and building wealth is tricky. I mean, you have to be, you have to have some sort of discretionary income or some sort of discretionary fund in order to play with that. Because most people, I, I don't even think, uh, what was it, whatever the statistic was, mo- I think what 40% of people don't even have $500 for right. emergency expense. Right. And so yeah. there's a vast volume of people out there that are, are challenged that way just because they're either not making enough money and we can get a whole debate about $15 an hour, you know, minimum wage. And as a business owner, that's, that's not good for me, but as, right, as yeah, an yeah. individual working for me, that's good for them, you know, and there's got to be a shared kind of mutual thing. But as we come to the end of our uh, lunch hour, <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> yeah, it goes by quick, man. So if you guys have questions, if you love what you see, if you like what you see, Give us, uh, give us some feedback. Uh, give us a little hearts. Give us the little thumbs ups and uh, subscribe if you're on YouTube too. But uh, uh, we come to the segment where we talk about stocks, the sexy part about our show. <laughs> right. I, 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 just spent, I just spent the, the past 15 <laughs> minutes saying how betting on stocks is stupid and how you, know, you should focus on other things and, and, and all this stuff. And now we go, it's talking about stocks. <laughs> you know, Frank, you know, I know alcohol is bad for me. But, and that's true. You know, <laughs> yeah. but for some reason, every Friday, I'm always over there at the bar tap. Because especially have, at this time, right? If if you come down to work, cutie, visit me in my office. You can have a be part of the beer tap. <laughs> ah, very we nice. Have, we have free beer and wine. You come on. Wow, in. very I'm nice. Waiting for you, Frank. Yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, so, um, uh, I guess we can answer this while I pull up the first stocks. And sure, go ahead. Uh, Mario's asking: Is Bitcoin a good thing to invest? Uh, had that discussion. So we, 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 we've talked about Bitcoin a little bit in the past. Um, this is my, my personal take on it, uh, and do with it as, as, as you know, <laughs> as you please. But so to me, things like Bitcoin and gold and things that don't produce anything, um, we ta- we said that those those uh, in those assets are greater folds, greater full assets. Basically, all your all your when you buy it, all you're hoping for is that somebody a bigger fool than you is gonna buy it from you at a higher price because they don't really do that. There was this real interest, interesting article on the Wall Street Journal about what is Bitcoin and stuff like that. And Bitcoin and and I, I you know putting things into perspective, Bitcoin is software. That's all it is. It's a piece of software that you're betting on. It's this blockchain technology uh, that that you know that was created that is very useful. I'm not saying it's not it's not you know big blockchain technology is is is, is a very uh, useful thing that I think is going to get a lot of uses outside of cryptocurrencies uh, in the future. But I mean that that's really all it is. I mean, what are you betting on? Are you, are you, why are you why are you buying Bitcoin because you're betting against the U.S. because you're betting against the dollar because you're betting against you know capitalism or or whatever it is. And so to me, um, it's okay if you want to have a tiny piece of it for whatever reason. But I wouldn't be the the, you know, the Elon Musk or all these people that are putting billions of dollars in there, you know, not that I have them, but um, I wouldn't put a large portion of my portfolio in in these types of things. Now, I have met people that have done very well with Bitcoin, but um, it's just, you know, it's a greater fool thing. It's, there's, there's nothing underlying that. So. Well, and and I think my brother brought up a good point because he watches the show and likes to critique me (laughs) and avoid coming on here, even though I've invited him. But uh, he, hey, you know, we, we, we want opinions. We, we want to make this part of, you know, of, of what people are talking about. So, yeah, come on in and join us during the lunch hour here with uh, Finance Friday. Frank. Right. But, uh, you know, he did bring up a good point that people should purchase by percentages more than they do dollars, you know, because you could have, you know, um, you know, lots of stock shares or whatever. But if you're if you're not um, increasing it by a certain percentage, right? I mean, what's what's a good percentage? Uh, as far as like uh, growth um, in, in your perspective, or at least from your 
your mind. You know, so from from real estate, good potential growth on any kind of real estate investment is between three to five percent. So anything less than that's probably not the best investment because that again, uh, as you get closer to five percent, you're you're going uh, above appreciation um, uh-huh. in, in this market. But right, right. as far as stocks goes, you know, is there well, is there I a mean- good percentage that that people should look at? It, it, it depends really on, on the type of, so we're going to focus exclusively on stocks, but even among stocks, you know, you have your, your kind of your more value stocks that are going to give you the, you know, 5% or 6%. You have growth stocks that are going to give you 8%, 9%. In the long run, I'm saying it's kind of what they have done historically, but then you have small cap stocks and, uh, and in, in emerging market stocks that historically have given 12 or 15%. Right. And so there's there's certain dimension, you know, the, there's certain kind of dimensions uh, of return that have historically performed better than the overall market. Small cap stocks being one of them. Um, value stocks actually have outperformed the, the, the market, but there's certain dimensions and emerging markets and stuff like that. So it, it ranges, you know, it depends on the type of stock you have, but you could go, I would say just on average, just the regional stock market has historically been like eight to 10 percent. So again, the you know, talk to your financial advisor. We're just an entertainment show. If you want right. to hire Frank, talk to Frank on the side. We're not guaranteeing that the market is going to give you eight percent this year or ten percent. It could give you ten. It, it, in in every in every year, looking forward one year, the stock market can be up thirty percent or it could be down thirty percent. That's like the, that's based on standard deviation. That's what it can be in any one year. It's kind of when you extend it to the long run, the five years and the 10 years, that you start seeing those, you know, those things average out to 6%, 8%, 10%. Okay. So um, as we get to our first stock, um, thank you, Mr. Matthew Chris Speed, for uh, chiming in. Chris Speed. Oh, <laughs> doing some, uh, some ticker uh tickers in there and uh now we're looking them up so i did i did look these up a little bit i did look at the uh um company a little bit uh, before uh-huh. we got on the show so biol which is biolace inc um we have about a one year um i mean trailing at about uh it says one of your penny stocks uh, i think he likes penny stocks by the way uh, we're looking at about 72 cents a share trailing, you know, roughly for the past year at about 40 cents shot up to looks like one point a dollar 40 in, uh, or February this this month or last month. Uh, but no P ratio, nothing. What, what kind of analysis can we give regarding BioLace um, from what you're seeing, Frank? This is this is a, a basically a dental laser systems. They they do dental laser stuff. I, I mean, again, out of my ignorance, uh, the dental industry is not necessarily, uh, from my perspective, and Matt might kick me in the shins when I see him. Right. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't see a whole lot of innovation in, in the dental industry, and that's probably <laughs> reflective of what this stock is. I mean, it's a penny stock. I mean, what do you, you're, not well, losing, you're not losing millions off this thing. So. Yeah, I mean, it's off, and again, I don't... It's, uh, <laughs> the reason that I don't get it much is because I don't want to say that the, this is either a good buy or a bad buy. I don't know, to be honest with you, uh, what what I'll, I'll say it. <laughs> what your definition of a good buy or, or a bad buy is, you know, it, it depends. But I mean, from what the numbers that you showed, I mean, it, it has negative earnings. Now, have those negative earnings been getting smaller and smaller, right? Or do they stay negative for a long period of time? Um, if you see at least that they were investing in the company and those, you know, the, the money gets reinvested. So that's why they have negative earnings, but eventually you see an upward trend towards positive earnings, then that could be good. You know, just because a company, like we said, we mentioned Amazon, you know, a couple of weeks ago, they had negative earnings for a very long time because, you know, of the, um, uh, the, the, so much money that they were putting back into the company, but, uh, uh, you knew that kind of that money was being fruitful in the, in the long run. So, so yeah, again, going back to the, uh, cause we, in the show last week, we talked about industries. I don't see a whole lot of innovation in the dental industry, unless, unless they can figure out some way to minimize the pain and, and minimize the fear. I don't necessarily see a whole lot of innovation. Again, Matt might like hate me later and stop watching the show. Hmm. Um, but I, I did find interesting um, the next uh, stock uh, he sent us which is uh, this one, Smile Direct. So again, another dental uh, industry stock uh, running at about $10 a share right now. If you look at the year, year over year, it's, it's getting a little bit up there. 
Um, it's last year it started off around eight dollars, dipped down to about three, and now hovering around ten. Um, no PE ratio, really not a whole analysis here. But as as I looked at the company, what I did like um, the IPO in September. Um, they have locations across the U.S. for um, dental correction and cosmetic work, which which is pretty much dental work anyway. It's a lot of just cosmetic stuff. Um, at least for my, again, ignorant <laughs> place right. in the dental industry. Yeah. I'm not a dentist. Please, I'm not a dentist. Ignore every dental advice I give you. <laughs> but uh, what I did like about this company, though, is that they're a subscription-based company. And that's, and that's probably why you've seen a little bit more um, I don't know, surge. And this isn't really like uh, coming from 4 to $10 over a year. I mean... The thing I like about this company was they're more of a subscription based. They mm-hmm. were um, running at about three dollars a month to get your your braces, and I think that's kind of the wave of or the future, or at least at least commercial business. And and some of the folks that I work with here at Workuity, um, a lot of what uh, people are pointing to are more subscription based, so low cost monthly fees, the stuff you can just forget about. Netflix yeah. is big on that. Uh, Disney Plus got on the game for streaming. Right. There are so many subscription-based services as a company. I think that's kind of the way that you're going to make money in this industry is small little bits and volume yeah. uh, rather than like those big, you know, uh, contracts you know, for video work. Like I, I, with the CEO network, what we're looking at and what we're translating to or transferring to is more of a subscription base where you can yeah. come in and, and cancel any time. I think those are the things that people are kind of leaning towards or looking for as far as a company goes. It, but it, it is. It is, but one thing that I would caution on subscription-based service is, and you'll see that like on Netflix earnings and, and, and stuff like that, Netflix is subscription-based, uh, but one one slight hint that those subscriptions growths are, are, are kind of tapering or they were down or, you know, they're even slowing off or whatever it is, you start, you, you start seeing a big impact on the stock price. You know, because what they want is, yeah, you have the you have the subscriptions, but can you keep on growing them? And it's always about more, right? Every quarterly every quarterly report is, did you grow more? Did you grow more? And if you don't grow what they thought they were going to grow, then I mean, it doesn't matter if you have millions of subscribers still paying. The fact that you stopped growing uh, can have a huge impact on the stock price. That's a good. Uh... I wouldn't say advice. yeah. So yeah. So don't that's, don't don't. That's just, some good no. entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> we do not give stock tips here or advice. Please talk to your financial advisor or call Francisco Ayello on the side, and he will kind of navigate you through that stuff. Yes, correct. Um, and so uh, I'm trying to buy for time. So we got about five minutes before we have to head. Well, actually, lunch so, out. so uh, oh. if you if if you want to go back real quick to that to that uh, stock. Um, one thing that I will point out, uh, and so something that you know, if you do want to get into stock trading and stuff like that, um, some you know things to watch for. We talked about you know doing PE analysis and stuff like that. Um, this one has a negative PE ratio, uh, but um, so the P, you know, again, look at the look at the earnings per share. Are they are they staying negative? Are they improving at least or something? But one thing that you see there is a one year target estimate of twelve eighty eight. Uh, kind of towards the bottom, Uh, one-year target estimate of 1288. Basically, so you have the uh, financial analysts that target these companies, that they follow these individual sectors and the companies within the sector, and they perform their financial analysis, and they come up with this number, what they think the price should be. Now, I think uh, there's a couple of brokerages. Am I still there? Yeah, you're here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a couple <laughs> of brokerages. Uh, for example, I think Schwab does a good job. If you go, if you have like a Schwab, you're trading in Schwab. I don't know about Robinhood because I don't have an account, but they'll give you analyst reports uh, for free, uh, and you can read those analyst reports. Some things, some of those things, especially for the larger companies, they're like 50, 50 pages long, and they'll go in there between you know by division and by stuff like that. And so it's these people that have access to the company, to the executives, to the suppliers, to the customers and stuff like that, that, you know, even I'm assuming that they have a lot more information that we do and can make a better decision, but even their numbers are often wrong. The vast majority of the time, those numbers are wrong, you know? So 
And it just goes to show you that if these people, the financial analysts that live, these people live and breathe this stuff, right? Um, uh, and uh, they, they still get those numbers wrong. Yeah, and, and I think, of, again, talking about the vast majority of people in a very blanket statement, it's like, hey, I have $10,000, where do I put it? Yeah, <laughs> I right. want to make 20000 by next month. And, and that's, that's the fault of being human, I guess, is uh, wanting, the, wanting the riches, but uh, never working towards the rewards. Um, right, yeah. I mean, if somebody has $10,000, it, it depends on where you're in the process, right? Do you have $50,000 in debt? Well, I wouldn't say do, don't do anything, but pay down your debt with that thing, right? Or, or, or something like that. But it just depends. Um, it, it, it depends on where you are in the, in the path. Um, <clears throat> we get so influenced by what, what we're hearing. And we just don't, we don't, we, we fail to stop and recognize where we're at as individuals, as a family, you know, what are our family situation, where our dynamics are, do we really need to be investing right now, or should we be saving for a down payment, you know, work with Robert if you're looking to buy a house, uh, but should we be saving for a down payment, should we be, uh, you know, saving for kids college, that's going to be a lot different, you can't be bidding on stocks for, for on a 529, um, so, you know, it just, it just depends on where you're at. Okay, so we got about uh, no time left. So we're going to look at one more stock. <laughs> My brother brought up one uh, on the show last week uh, in the comments. Sure. So again, if you have comments and you want us to address some of these things for the next show, please, by all means, we're here for you guys. We're here to answer your questions as we can because this is an entertainment show. It's not uh, financial advice. Please keep that in mind. So the last stock I wanted to take a look at since he brought it up um, was Airbnb. I, I do like the stock. I, I should say I like the company, but this is what their what their stock is is looking at. So the one one year uh, trailing looks like we had a low of 124, and we're at about 178 now. Well, so they've only they've only been trading for a short time. They haven't been around for one year. So you'll you'll see just you know the, yeah, December December 2020. Yeah, right. Is when they IPO. So we have a one year target of 185 and we're looking at 178. So <laughs> pretty close, right? Uh, you really don't see any other analysis. But uh, you said that uh, these companies like Charles Schwab do do disclose some of those financials. Well, so, you, I mean, for the most part, you, you know, those things can get expensive. If you want to get uh, analyst reports, um, you could buy them, but they, they some of them are a couple hundred dollars a piece. Uh, from 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 one company, but some some brokerages uh, will allow you, you know, they'll give you a certain number of uh, of uh, analyst reports for free. But you just go in there. What, what what I would suggest to the average investor is go in there, the get a, look at a Morningstar report, look at a you know one of these the the, the uh, for example a JP Morgan analyst, and look at the stuff that they're looking at when they value these companies. <laughs> it's not going to be just PE. I'll tell you that it's going to be what they did last quarter. What was this? What their suppliers, their relationships, their margins, gross margins, and they predict, you know, these, all these projections that make out and that's how they come up with the number. And again, and here we're looking at a little screen and saying, Oh yeah, this is a great company because it's trading at $2 and yeah, sure. Why not? Is it, why not? Right. Or these people, they spend, I don't know how many man hours, hundreds of man hours to try to come up with that one price. And again, most of the time it's still wrong. Yeah. Wrong, wrong. Meaning that that price target is a one year. So basically they're saying in one year we ex we expect, you know, the price to be there. It's, it's nowhere near there, you know, because the economy crashed and all the, the whole market is down 20% or whatever, right? Yeah. And, and the reason I brought up Airbnb, because it goes back to our show last week talking about industries, Airbnb, again, I think for most people, they know it is a, a, a convenient hotel, basically, that people rent out their space in their house. They rent, around, they rent out their house and right. they rent it out to people. So. I like that. I, I like that concept in the, in the future and in the present. In the present, we have a lot of people coming from out of state, out of California, uh, Illinois, Texas to come and reside here looking for a house. And what they're doing today is renting out these Airbnbs. California, they're renting out Airbnbs because it's cheaper than the rent that they charge there, which is amazing, yeah. you know, per month. And as a, as a company, I, I see that still, uh, well, I see that today in this kind of aggressive re, uh, residential real estate market, but in the future, people, as they get back into the, the swing of like entertainment, getting in traveling, that's a company that's going to survive kind of this, the, these issues and these things. Yeah. But uh, again, 
warning, <laughs> you know, uh, because I'm that, not a financial advisor. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to avoid people rushing out and, and, you know, they have an idea and they rush out and do something without thinking a little bit more about it. Yeah. So we, I, I've mentioned this before, just because it's a good company doesn't mean, or a good technology or a good idea, it doesn't mean it's a good investment. Because again, we're talking about PE ratios that are hundreds in the hundreds or even in the thousands, right? And so Airbnb, yeah, I like the idea. This, this whole sharing economy, Uber, and you know all these right, you know, all this stuff. Sharing economy, I think, is, is here to stay for sure. But um, the idea is good, the concept is good, but does that make it a good investment? I don't know. You know, there's a lot more under that. Look at those analyst reports. You get even be, even among the analyst reports, you're gonna see saying somebody saying, uh, "Oh, Airbnb should be you know 250," and the other one is saying Airbnb should be 150. And so look at what why they're saying that. You know, what is this one saying, or what is this one projecting that this one isn't? And so um, again, it, it's not just because of the, the a good company doesn't mean it's a good investment. Well, with that said, you are a financial advisor, but not on this show, which is just strictly for entertainment. So it's over the cut. For entertainment, but my services are out there. Um, and again, <laughs> uh, we'll, uh, um, I'll, I'll get you a, a good, uh, a good website here to, so that I can, you know, convey the message that I want to convey. Hopefully if this speaks to you, uh, I would love to work with you guys. I could work pretty much in any state. Um, uh, so it doesn't have to be just Arizona. We're, we're, we're based in Arizona, but I can work with people in any state. So if you want to contact Fred, go ahead and DM him uh, on Facebook here. Um, also leave a message in the comments section. And we'll follow up with that. Frank's uh, contact information is email and his LinkedIn uh, links are in the comment section. So that's the end of today's show, Senor yeah. Ayala. Uh, I had so much fun, man. I can't believe it. Now I have to go back to work. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's past lunch hour. Look, we're late. We're running late. I'm going gotta, I'm gotta to tell the boss that. Uh, oh, yeah, my boss too. <laughs> had a bad lunch. But uh, thanks for everybody for watching. Please, again, leave your comments. Uh, give us a little heart. Give us a little love as, you, as you're watching things and you like what you're seeing. Hit that subscribe button. And then we will see you next week, Friday, afternoon yes. hour, 12 o'clock. So tune right. in. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.